Hey guys, it's Asher from The Technique here. This is a bit of a different video, um, and I'm actually going to merge this channel with um, Ronnie from The Fishing Style, and he's just going to give me a little help with like editing it and getting the camera right, because it's a bit hard because it's not, like a put out screen, and all that, and um, he's been doing a lot of color grading on CS6, so he's going to do a tutorial on how to color grade on CS6. Well, just in case you're wondering, I am Ronnie. Um, I do most of the editing for the fishing style along with Asher. Uh, I think I'm good enough. Um, and I've been using CS6 and I've really liked it. I've liked it more than the newer versions of Premiere. It's a bit more harder to color grade on there. And uh, I'm going to talk about some aspects that you definitely should think about when you are filming as well. So um, I guess we can just get into the video. So the main reason I'm actually using CS6 is because um, I've had a lot of problems with um, the new version of Premiere, running it on my new laptop. Now, even though my new laptop is powerful than the old laptop that I was using, which is my school laptop, um, like it's it's just not well optimized. It's just got so many bugs and glitches. And even at school, when, when we work on the editing workstations that, the, that school has, and they have like 32 gigs of RAM, like a like a I don't know, Quadro 4000 as a graphics. Like it's it it doesn't run well on any of them, so I just prefer using CS6, like, and that way I can use it with the exact same license. Uh, it just makes sense to me, and it, it doesn't really it's not that hard to learn either. So, so guys, uh, let's get into this. So first of all, we're gonna create a new project. Let's do that, and well, because this is Ash's uh, computer, I, everything is completely set up not how I like it. So, let's go 1920. So guys, we've opened up our new project, and uh, let's just copy some files in. I don't know. We'll do this from. So a friend of mine, uh, uh, and Asher, and I filmed him playing the guitar. So we're gonna just copy some files in. They're a bit underexposed, but I guess that'll just make it even easier for me to show you how to use it. So let's chuck this on the timeline, and uh, what we're gonna do first of all. So anyway, we've got the file on the timeline, so. Now next what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put the effect on. So the effects you want to use um, are the um, brightness and contrast effect. So brightness and contrast, just chuck it on there. And the three-way color corrector. And just in case you're wondering, that under the color correction, color correcting tab, under video effects. Um, so yeah. So let's go back there. Now what you want to do is you want to go over to Effect Controls. Now obviously this clip as you can see is a bit underexposed. So what we're going to do is just slightly turn up um, the bright, oh, slightly turn up the brightness. Yep, that looks around good. And definitely turn up the contrast. There we go. That looks pretty good too. Now one thing I've definitely found with this version of Premiere and color correcting in it is that it's really, really, really hard or almost impossible pretty much to recover the highlights so it's all right if you shoot a bit underexposed never shoot overexposed especially if you have a lot like a small areas that are blown out that are less noticeable maybe you can get away with it but if you have large areas that are completely blown out you might be in a bit of trouble but yeah let's get on with it so we're going to skip past all that we'll come back to that later but let's go to the output levels so if i don't know if you use a new version of version of premiere it's pretty much like changing the levels of the shadows, midtones, and the highlights. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring those shadows up a little bit so they're not just black. So that looks right. And if you, if you take it up a bit more, also bring that slight fade in, which is also something that's quite cinematic, I guess. And, yeah. And we'll bring those whites. We'll probably just keep those whites there. And here, that's pretty much the blacks, that's the whites, and that's the midtones. So we're going to make the blacks a bit more blacker. We're going to make the whites more white. And I don't really touch the midtones. Alright, so that pretty much looks way better than what we started off with. Let's keep going. Um, so, next thing what I'd do is drag the shadows down to the blue or the teal. You want to do this very slowly. If you do this too much, it will look bad. Trust me. So just do this in a very minimal amount, and now I'm going to drag the midtones up a little bit as well. 
you can, and you want to do that so the mid-tones go do that orangey sort of colour. So that's pretty much called teal grey, teal and orange, excuse me for that. And one thing you'll notice is that you get these weird lines, and that's that's because CS6, you're, you, you're, what, all this is shadow, and all this is our um, mid-tones. So there's a very defined line between them. And to get rid of that, what you want to do is you want to use these, so that tonal range definition. So these on the bottom are the shadows, and that up top is the highlights. So just pull those shadows out, and you don't want to pull them out too much, because then everything could just look blue, or if you pull the highlights out, everything will just be orange. You just want to pull them out very slowly, just so you get rid of that, I guess, that sort of fringing, I want to call it that. And there you go. That looks so much better than what we started off with. All right, let's do another clip. Um, so we'll do something that's a bit more, I guess. Um, what do, what do I call it? A bit more saturated. Um, because this is fairly simple, and this is saturation. Everything is correct. It's exactly what you want it, or at least for me, that's exactly where I would want it if I was doing film. So this is a video that I've been working on recently. That's just. Whoop. Let's just copy a file over. I don't know. We'll use, say, this one. Copy that over onto our timeline. Oh. Let's just get rid of this. Oh. Sorry, guys. Um, when I'm using this on my own computer, I have all the keyboard shortcuts. It's exactly what I'd like it as. Right now, I don't. So. So yeah, um, so that's the clip. I'll play it through. There we go. Now we're gonna color correct that. So we're gonna do the same as before. Um, let's go to effects. Yeah. So chuck on the three-way color corrector, and we'll chuck on brightness and contrast, and yeah. So, in this one, what you want to do, oh, first thing, it's, it's probably a bit underexposed, for my liking. There we go. So now we've got all the shadows coming up. Definitely turn the contrast up, probably not that much. There we go. And one thing to remember, like, always with color grading, no matter what software you use, it, it's definitely a lot of personal preference. This is my preference. This is how I like it. I don't... I, you don't want, I don't like the teal grey, teal and orange, sorry, being super in your face. I like it to be nice and subtle. So uh, that's what I'm looking, that's the goal I'm going for. If you want it to be super intense, you can just sort of, I guess you can just have to pull these down more. Look, it's personal liking, this is just a basic guide on how to do it. So, first thing I'll probably do with a clip like this, is it's pretty saturated for my liking. Um, probably just bring the shadows out a bit so we get that bit of fade effect. The whites are looking pretty good. I want to make them a bit wider. I like the blacks a bit blacker because there's not enough contrast in that for my liking. And next thing, I'm just gonna bring these. Yep, bring these shadows down to around that sort of blue area. That's probably a bit too much, but we can fix that up if we need to. Yeah, as you can see, I feel like there's a bit too much of. Like there's a, it's probably not. I I don't think this is you know, what's the word? The exposure isn't high enough, so we're gonna head back. Yeah, turn that exposure up even more. Just don't overexpose it. As long as it's not blown out, like you want it so the whites are not just under blown out. That's what you want, and it's got that beautiful sort of faded look at, look to it. Probably turn that contrast up a bit more as well. All right, and that's pretty cinematic already. Um. And yeah, with this one, I don't think I really need to play around with the tonal range definition. That's what it's called, by the way. I don't think I need to play around with that. Just playing back through it. As you can see, there's no like weird fringing or anything like that. So, oh, let's turn that down a quarter as half resolution. But yeah, uh, now, if you do want to turn the saturation down, or up, I guess, you can do this. So, this is 200 saturation, just making those greens. You can do it individually for each sort of amount of light there is, so this is the mid-tones, the highlights and everything. This this looks this is super saturated right now. 
saturated, saturated. But yeah, if you like, if you're looking for that kind of look, go on ahead. I probably, I personally prefer something. Oh, I personally prefer something that's a bit less saturated. So you can also turn these down. Uh, but personally, if it's if it's shot at a sort of nice flat color profile, then you, I'd probably turn the saturation up to around 120. That's sort of where I like it. This is a bit more saturated, so I think around 100 would be fine for each one. And that is, in my opinion, pretty cinematic. Obviously, it's up to you. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. As you can see, that's actually a bit below now. So what we can do now, bring these down a little bit. See, now those aren't blown up, blown out anymore. That's the output levels. Just change that if you think blown out parts. But yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. Uh, do we need another, do you want to, do you guys want to see another, should we do another one? Or is that good? Okay, let's do it. So, I'm going to do a similar one now. I'm going to tell you why. So, oh, it's a bit glitchy. So the main reason I'm going to do a similar one is, okay, let's say you will work really hard to colour correct this one, and the other one is in the exact same area, and you want the colour correcting to look exactly the same. Because, I guess, if you're going to do it again, it won't look quite the same. So what I'm going to do, it's really simple. Uh, it's got to, I just want to go copy, I need to go, oh, paste attributes. And the exact same colour correcting that you did for this one, is it applied to this one, to the, to the next clip. Look at that. So that looks exactly, well, almost exactly the same. Uh, there's a bit more colour fringing, or whatever, not colour fringing, what's it called? Whatever it's called on there, so just select that clip. And what you can do, head down there, just smoothen those shadows out a little bit. And by the way, you never want it to be down here. Because that means all the blacks will be blue. You don't want that. You just want to be around here. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. That's a good sequence. Um, and a lot of people could use... You could use an adjustment layer for this. But I find this a lot easier. Because different clips are ex differently exposed. Sometimes you're shooting at 24 frames a second. So 25 frames a second. So the shutter speed is set to 150th. And ne next second you're shooting slow motion at 60 frames a second. And your shutter speed is set to 120th, 120th. So, pretty much, uh, what you want to, like, so, obviously, the exposure is probably going to end up being a bit different. Something's going to be, something's going to be brighter, something's going to be a bit, you know, lighter. So, um, yeah, you can play around with it. And this sort of gives you that chance, since you're just putting an adjustment layer, which is universal. This, that way, let's, like, because, obviously, we saw some colour fridging. We, we were able to get rid of that by just turning this up. If you were using an adjustment layer, you wouldn't be able to do that. So, I think that pretty much sums up with this video. Thanks for watching, and um, I guess I'm going to do what I always do when I end like a Fisherman's Monthly or a Weekly or a Fortnightly now, I guess. Bye-bye.